Hi, my name's Flossie and I live in this Utilimaster Ford 1999 step van, my tiny home on wheels. And it is breakfast time. And I've been working from bed. The open wildness is calling you. Yeah. <sighs> you go to bed like a normal human. <laughs> After a few days of resting, our bodies started to feel a little more alive. Our energy returning to our souls and the desire for adventure building. I thought the earth remembered me. She took me back so tenderly, arranging her dark skirts, her pockets, full of lichen and seeds. I slept as never before, a stone on the riverbed. Nothing between me and the white fire of stars. But my thoughts, they floated, light as moths among the branches of the perfect trees. All night, I heard the small kingdoms breathing around me. The insects, the birds, who do their work in the darkness. All night, I rose and fell as if in water, grappling with luminous doom. By morning, I had vanished at least a dozen times into something better. This poem is by Mary Oliver. So, did that. Oh, there's a wire here. <laughs> I can see all her bits and pieces. Got her top off. So hard to see inside at all. Oh, I know. Like at night time, you can do it with a torch, but I don't think it will work during the daytime. Well. I think that's all I can do for now. I have added some more draft stop around the doors. Tonight when it is dark, I will check all of that stuff. But I think it is time to put everything back in here. I have discovered that I have this one here, my negative bus bar coming from the battery. This is where my smart shunt needs to go in here. But I am going to need to unscrew this whole wall to attach the positive wires onto my batteries because I cannot get to them through there without taking this wall down. But it is very temporarily attached on purpose so that it is easy to access in there. So. <sighs> Time to put everything back in my garage now. The driving distances aren't very far, so we made multiple stops because there's so much beauty and it feels good to move our bodies. It feels beautiful to be amongst these majestic trees and keeping an eye out for foraging, plants, identifying trees. You know, I was trying to figure out what kind of tree this is, but I am totally stumped. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can I thought of that build just a now. bridge and yeah. cross over it. The bridge to knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Haida Gwaii contains some rare, special ecosystems. 
coastal temperate rainforests, wetlands, bogs and sand dunes, and approximately 100 kilometers of beaches. Cedar working is like some of the most advanced and like renowned, like bent with boxes, like all sorts of stuff. So they use cedar heavily, heavily, heavily. That buckles like this other one will slide down. Danger tree. It's like all salmonberry bushes. So many, it's gonna be berry heaven. And will my switches turn on to charge the battery? Because it's overcast. By the time we finally reached camp that evening, I was pretty exhausted, my body very tired. This is my view out this window. And I've been working from bed. This is my view out the other window. And it is breakfast time, oh yeah. Yeah, I call them nipple ones. <laughs> Gee, the sun came out in the afternoon. Woohoo! Woo I was just saying that the wind and the trees, it's got this wild sound. But really it's just because we're on an exposed coast and there's just ocean and then hills and trees. Entering the forest, we embarked on at least a three hour 10 to 12 kilometer round hike. We were heading down the beach to one of the most famous shipwrecks on Haida Gwaii. This is beautiful. Yeah, the water is harsh on filters. Yeah, and this might even be a little salty. Much of this forest pathway to get down to the shipwreck runs through forest and creeks and bridges and beautiful wetlands before it heads down to the beach, the river estuary being part of the forest trail. What makes it so dark? People with cannons. These are like forest biomass tea. <laughs> Because there's no like snow melt, it's not snow melt water, yeah. and there's not a large fresh water input. It's all forest water. It's all run through the earth and mm -hmm. through decaying matter. And forest on one side, estuary on the other. It is important to time this with the tide so there is enough space 
to walk and get out there within the three hours that you need to get there and back at least. And of course, I think we spent longer out there because we were enjoying ourselves, running around, enjoying the beach, taking a rest, eating snacks and doing a lot of photography. There is a lot of history here, some recent, some very, very old, both indigenous and colonial. Sometimes it's hard to tell where the blend is in between. Yeah. The delight of an adventurer to explore. Cool. And wonder what was here. Who was here? What was their story like in the past? Despite being subjected to nearly a hundred years of punishing coastal weather, the iconic ship's bow still juts out from the sand, exposing weathered wood, various metal elements and rusted portholes. The Pasuta was a wooden hold steam freighter from Raymond, Washington. Whoa, my head's gonna fly off. Its construction contained 1.8 million board feet of lumber, 20,000 tree nails. Regrettably, the Pasuta did not last long as it revived its career as a barge. Seas are exceptionally treacherous. And the heck it straight. I'm assuming this is like part of the keel, but like it's so hard to tell what shape the ship was. And on December 11, 1928, gale winds battered the tug as it struggled to tow the heavily laden carrier past the mouth of the Talal River. Suddenly, the Basuda broke free of its tow line, running aground deep in the sand. After hull recovery efforts failed, a local salvage operation sw stripped what they could before leaving the remnants of this massive vessel high on the beach. Walking through the shipwreck, I was incredibly interested and fascinated by the tiny details, the colors, the shapes, the weathering, the shells, the way nature has taken its toll on some parts of the ship and yet some parts remain almost original. You could say nature is a harsh mistress, but as the elements take wear on anything, I think we become more beautiful. You look at it differently and see the beauty revealed from beneath. That's amazing! <laughs> oh my gosh, hi. I was eating a snack and then I was like, I feel somebody's energy right behind me. Oh. <laughs>
we were here late afternoon and hopefully we can make it back before the tide comes up and so that it blocks the river pathway in. But we should make it back. Anyway, it's good to get moving. I'm feeling much better. I spent the last few days feeling rotten as heck, very fluey and sick, so it feels nice to feel alive again. And be out somewhere really cool. Feels really nice just to sit here. I'm gonna listen to the sound and the wind and be in the shelter and the sun came out. I don't know, the sound of the waves through the ship are really cool. And I'm currently just watching the, the clouds truck along while Amanda runs down around and does a ton of photography and shots and I focused a little more on like close-up stuff and looking at the bungs in the deck and how the ship was made with three layers on the outside of the hull. Yeah. It's so cool. Oh, that's funny. Hello. 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 Your voice sounds so funny. <laughs> it literally sounds like it's right here. <laughs> oh, I just want to keep walking. <laughs> it's like you could just walk for days along the beach. Well, good luck. We have to walk back then. No, but that's not the direction. It's not the direction you want to go. No, I want to just. You're like, the open wildness is calling you. Yeah. I get it. You'll go, you'll hike this beach another day. Some other time. I'm going a lot slower than Amanda is now. I don't have the greatest knees and it's just nice to move at a pace that feels good for my body, especially on the last half a kilometer back. Woo. I think this whole hike was about over six kilometers. So decent size. Oh, six kilometers one way. Yeah. Hoping I'm near the end now. Amanda's left me in the dust. Um, my body is sore. Two days of hiking in a row. It's not what I'm used to. I normally do a big hike and then small walks and big hike and then nothing and then small walks. So it's a lot more intermittent and mixed in with swimming as well, you know? But I think we're nearly there. I can see the sky is opening up in front of me and I am ready for dinner and bed and then another big day tomorrow. <sighs> it is beautiful and I feel incredibly, incredibly grateful that this is my life and I managed to fit in and squeeze in and do all the things that I do and that there is very little life that isn't utilized 
And so they say live 120% and I think I'm doing it, even if I'm walking slow. Ah, just hearing the kingfisher, I'm feeling so much gratitude for being here and it being beautiful weather and warm, warm enough. Yeah, gratitude for you being here, gratitude that I can share all of this, that I have an audience. trees. It's huge. Oh, that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't choose orange pepper because the tofu is kind of orange. Yeah, it is. So now what? we have red, orange, yellow, green. All and the colors like of the rainbow. It's kind of too angularly cut to be like just a hollow inside. Wow. Well, it's also rotting. Since yeah, of course, but it's still yeah. like you've got the angles. Yeah. Wow. And the footpath all the way around. Yep. God. What is this? How is it so precious? That's incredible.
them some big trees and where some big trees once stood. Wow! I'm more than a forest, I'm a lifeline. Within my canopy is a pharmacy of, for sustaining life. Licorice root, mint, and you provide proven remedies. I am rich with life. It's huge. Geese, deer, bear, cranes, and ravens. The hider eat only what is necessary and can be transformed into paddles, medicines, art, nourishment, baskets, tools, clothes, and homes. Yeah. This big one. Oh yeah, you can tell by the bark. Yeah, you can see like how good that would be for like a ship's mast. Like it's so straight. And it's huge. Yeah. Whereas like cedars like twist a lot. Yeah. And provide food, shelter, and survival. In return, the Hyder bestow allegiance, thanks, and respect. Together, we live harmoniously. I once was the golden spruce. Here is my story. An old man and his grandson were in the forest during a snowstorm. They began to make their way down river when the grandson decided to go defecate in the forest. The grandfather told him it is not right to disrespect nature and to continue on. The grandfather said to his son grandson, don't look back, things will never be the same. But the boy did not listen. He looked back and he began to grow roots and the boy grew into the Groden spruce. Though I was felled after 300 years, my lessons will carry forward. I am nature and a lesson of the Haida culture. Look after each other and be generous. Never take more than you need. Enjoy, share, and respect the land and the waters that sustain you. Everything I have has a purpose. Look after me, and I in turn will always look after you. Do not look back. There is so much more to see, feel, and love. <laughs> so tired, I can't even get the camera angle right. I think I've been waking up really early too. Yeah, but you go to bed like a normal human. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to sleep immediately last night. Yeah. I think you're just a sleeping anomaly. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. A huge thank you to my Patreons. Some special treats and travel plan updates coming your way very soon. I read every comment. Thanks so much. And I will see you all in the next one very soon. Bye.